Good morning, KCC family. Today's scripture reading comes from Philippians 2, verses 17 through 18, from the New International Version. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of this word. Ashley, thank you for doing our reading today. And Pastor Josh, Lauren, man, so good. Thank you for the special music. Love it. Love it. Will you pray with me as we ask God to speak to us through his word? Let's pray. Lord, you alone are worthy of our worship, of our complete devotion, of our complete allegiance. You alone are worthy to be served, to be honored, to be praised. Lord, we bow our hearts and at times we physically bow our bodies before you as our God, our King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords. And Lord, as we join our hearts around the world right now in worship through this service and through services streaming all over the world, we come together as one in Jesus Christ, as the body of Christ. What a joy we have. And we ask, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would continue to minister to us during these unusual times that we would choose every day to desire to be filled with your Spirit, that we'd ask to be filled with your Spirit, that we'd yield to the Holy Spirit. And Lord, as we're under unusual pressure in our homes, we pray, Lord, that it would be the Holy Spirit that would be seen as we are squeezed, as we are challenged. Lord, we especially pray for those we love as well as those we don't yet know who are suffering greatly at this time. For those who are dealing with illnesses and even death, for those who are dealing with lack of food and resources, Lord, we pray for them and ask that you would minister to their hearts, their souls, their bodies, and meet their physical needs. Lord, show us what we can do for them as well. And Lord, as we look into your word now, we ask for the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, for him to speak through me words that speak to every single heart that's listening to this message. In the beautiful name of Jesus, we all join our prayers. Amen. So, teenage boys need good role models. And when I was a teenage boy, my sister Trisha got married. She married a, a fine man. He was literally tall, dark, and handsome, eight years my senior, and he became a role model to me. I look up to him, and I wasn't old enough to drive yet, but I remember that he drove this really cool sports car. It was a British car, an MG, and he's real tall, and he could hardly fit in this little sports car, but I thought that was great, and I knew exactly what kind of car I wanted to get when I got a license. I wanted to get an MG just like my brother-in-law because he was a role model to me. I remember one evening I was watching a television show, one of my favorite shows. It was in black and white back then, and I was in the family room all by myself watching the show, and the show, some of you will remember, I Love Lucy, starring Lucille Ball. And my brother-in-law walks in the, the family room, as I recall the story, and he looks and sees what I'm watching, and he kind of scowls and says, do you like that show? Well, up until that time, I thought I did. <laughs> but all of a sudden, I said, no, no, not at all. Let's watch what you want to watch. I don't like this show. And I haven't watched I Love Lucy ever since. People have a way of influencing us. We are all influenced by other people, both for good and for bad. Influence according to our dislikes, our opinions regarding other people, our opinions regarding what's in style, our opinions regarding what kind of food we should eat and what restaurants we should go to. They influence us as to where we go to school and even who we marry. Other people influence us to do good things or bad things, naughty things or evil things. And people can influence us to do moral things and kind things and wonderful things. We're all being influenced 
by other people. And the most easily influenced people on the planet are our children. And our children are blank pages. And every single person they come in contact with is influencing them, is writing their story on that blank page for both good and bad. So you have to ask yourself, even during this difficult time, what story are you helping your children to write right now on their blank slates? Today we are going to be talking about people of influence as we continue in our series entitled Letters from Quarantine, as we look at a 2,000-year-old letter written by a man of influence, a man quarantined under house arrest by edict of his government because he was spreading a virus, in their opinion, virus in quotes, he was spreading the gospel, and they were trying to stop the spread of that virus of the gospel And he was waiting to be judged by the most powerful man on the planet at that time, an evil man by the name of Nero, the Roman emperor of the empire. But what is absolutely unbelievable, astounding, extraordinary, even miraculous, is the influence the apostle Paul had while he was under quarantine. Imagine with me for a moment that you are a first century Praetorian Roman guard. We already saw that the Praetorian guard is the elite guard of the emperor. Special. They're paid extra pay. And they guard the palace. And you're one of these guards, and you have just pulled duty to guard a smelly old Jewish man whose body is covered with thick scars all down his back, around his sides, and even across his chest from repeated lashings with whips that had pieces of sharp bone on them. And his body has bruises on it that have never healed from repeated beatings with clubs. And this smelly old Jewish man's face is disfigured from having been stoned and left for dead. And this smelly old Jewish man is losing his eyesight and seemingly losing his senses. He thinks he speaks for God. And if you, as this Roman guard, chained to this miserable specimen of a man during your guard duty, if you were told that this man would have more influence on the Roman Empire than the Emperor Nero himself, if you were told that this smelly Jewish man, this poor specimen of a human being, would have more influence for the next 2,000 years throughout the world than the Roman emperor, you would die laughing. And yet that's exactly what happened. The Apostle Paul is one of the most influential people who has ever lived. And some have even said the only person more influential than the Apostle Paul has been the Lord Jesus Christ himself. There are, of course, many factors on why the Apostle Paul was so influential, but I want to talk about just one of them today. Let's pick up our study today in Philippians 2, verse 17. If you have your Bibles or if you want to read it on the screen, here it is, Philippians 2, 17. The Apostle Paul writes this, But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering Upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. I read that verse and I think, what on earth does that mean? (laughs) I had to look it up because I really wasn't sure. I had to do some research. And I had to find out what a drink offering was. And I just found out that a drink offering was a cup of wine that the Jews would pour out to their god, or the Romans would pour out to their pagan gods as they began the big event of the big animal sacrifice. The 
drink offering was just a token. It wasn't costly. It was easy. You just poured out a little wine. But then you had the big sacrifice. You had the animal sacrifice that was costly and time-consuming and kind of a hassle to offer. And as Paul writes, he likens his imprisonment and his potential martyrdom to just a little drink offering. And he likens the Philippians' sacrificial financial gifts to him to keep him alive while he's under house arrest. He said that's the main event. That's the big sacrifice. What a man of humility. While under this pressure, he's a man of humility thinking about other people and noticing their sacrifices for him rather than really focusing on his sacrifice. And then he goes on to point out how happy he is. And he says, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. And then notice verse 18. In verse 18 of chapter 2, he tells this little Philippian church, he wants them to be happy too, writing, and you too, I urge you, rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. Don't you hate it when people are that happy? (laughs) I mean, really, we're quarantined. We're locked down. Jobs have been lost. Careers have been ruined. Schools have been closed. Educational opportunities have been lost. There's severe loneliness among the people who are sheltered alone. There are severe conflicts with people who are sheltered in groups with family members. There are weddings that have been delayed. There are funerals that have been unattended by loved ones. And you turn on the news and things are not supposed to get better. They're supposed to get worse. How can the Apostle Paul tell us to be happy? Who does he think he is anyways? (laughs) Besides, of course, an inspired writer by God who's writing God's word to us. Who does he think he is? Well, he thinks that he's a person of influence. And he wants to influence you, and he wants to influence me. Because you and I are also people of influence. I want to remind you of one of our points from last week. Last week, we learned this. Last week, we were taught that what you have experienced inwards is to be expressed outwardly. What you've experienced inwardly is to be expressed outwardly. In other words, God worked in you salvation and Christ-likeness, and it's up to you to work it out to express it. Well, when the crushing experiences of life squeezed the Apostle Paul, what came out of him was rejoicing. Let me say that again. When The crushing experience of life squeezed the Apostle Paul. What came out of him was rejoicing. And he expected the saying to be true of his little Philippian church when they were squeezed. And you read that and you go, well, that's not natural. (laughs) I'm sorry. That is not natural. I mean, whoever says, hey, this quarantine stuff, it's great. I hope we never go back to the way it was. Or... Hey, the government cost me my business that I spent 20 years building. Whoopee, hoo-hoo, yippee, I love it. Or what senior says, oh, who needs a senior prom? Anyway, graduation, I don't need that. Graduation parties, I wasn't looking forward to that. This Zoom stuff is so much better. The happiness that comes out of the Apostle Paul when he's squeezed just isn't normal. It is not natural. And that's because it's super natural. Supernatural. You might recall that the Apostle Paul wrote to another church in Galatia, 
Galatians 5, 22 and 23. He gives a list of things that happen when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And these things, if they're in you by the Holy Spirit, God worked them in. When you get squeezed, you work them out. And he gives a list, and he starts off by saying, when you have the Holy Spirit in you and you get squeezed, what comes out of you is love, and the next one is joy. And that is what happens when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's a whole treasure box of other things, supernatural stuff, that he lists in Galatians 5. 22 and 23. Well, there are many points I could make today, but I want to focus just on one. And in your sermon outline, if you take it out, if you pre-printed it, it's there online. There's only one point today, but at least the sermon isn't pointless. So here we go. One point, number one, the more you are squeezed, in quotes, the more influence you can have on others. The more you are squeezed, the more influence you can have on others. Think about it for a moment with me. We've already seen in a previous message when the Apostle Paul was being squeezed by being in house arrest, what came out was the gospel, and it spread, he said, throughout all the palace guard into Nero's household and beyond, and we know that it spread throughout the entire Roman Empire empire that by the fourth century Christianity became the state religion of the Roman Empire. That's what came out when the Apostle Paul was squeezed. You can have more influence on others while you're being squeezed. And that's what happened with the Apostle Paul. Churches right now are being squeezed. Doors are closed. We can't meet like we used to meet. And during this time, we're actually reaching more people than we were reaching before we were squeezed. We're having more influence. We have four, five, I don't know how many times, more people watching our services now online than we ever had in this building. And it's not just true about our church. It's true about churches all over the world that the church has been squeezed. And what's come out is, whoo, the gospel has spread for the glory of Jesus Christ. Parents are being squeezed to spend more time with their children. Spouses are being squeezed to spend more time with their spouses, to communicate deeper and often at a more raw level. Squeezing may hurt, but squeezing also has a great potential to help. The more you are squeezed, the more influence you can have on others. You see, you can't show patience until you're squeezed and you want to show impatience. That's when you need patience. You can't show unconditional love until you're squeezed and there are people out there that don't deserve your love. And so it has to be unconditional. You can't really display joy and happiness unless you're faced with the option to complain and grumble. I mean, the most happy people on the planet are not the wealthy people. The happiest people are the people in poverty that still rejoice. The happiest people on the planet are not the people who have good health and everything goes well for them. The happiest people on the planet are the people who have bad health and rejoice. That is true happiness when you are squeezed like the Apostle Paul, and you're still happy. That is true happiness. It's the wealthy young businessman whose parents were refugees or Vietnamese boat people, and in one generation, they got their son to go to to a business college, maybe Harvard or someplace, and he started a business, and he's a multimillionaire. That's who you admire more, rather than the young man who inherited his wealth from his parents and his grandparents. It's the Olympic runner who comes back from a crippling accident, or overcomes a birth defect, or grew up in the bush of Kenya, who wins the Olympic Contest that you admire more than the athlete who grew up with everything he needed to compete. The more you are squeezed, the more influence you can have on other people. 
Fanny Crosby, a name that many of you know, was one of the most prolific hymn writers in history. She wrote over 9,000 hymns and over 1,000 poems. Her hymns were so popular that she had to take on pseudonyms, aliases. She had over 200 aliases because hymn book publishers did not want to publish so many hymns by just one person. <laughs> but they wanted her hymns. So she had to change her name so her hymns could be in the hymn book. Fanny Crosby was born in Brewster, New York in 1820. When she was only six weeks old, she, she caught a cold and, and then she had an infection in her eyes. She went to go see the doctor. They put some pulses on her eyes, but she eventually became blind, completely blind as a newborn baby. She lived her whole life blind, and later in life, when asked about her blindness, Fanny Crosby stated this, and I quote, If perfect earthly sight were offered to me tomorrow, I would not accept it. I might not have sung hymns to the praise of God if I'd been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. She also once remarked these words. She said, when I get to heaven, the first face that shall ever gladden my sight will be that of my Savior. Wow. Fanny Crosby's biographer noted this. The biographer wrote, had it not been for Fanny Crosby's affliction, she might not have had so great an influence. There's our word, a person of influence. Fanny Crosby set a goal of winning one million people for Christ through her hymns. Hymns like, to God be the glory, great things he hath done, and blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, and Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> well, she wanted to reach a million people. She has reached 10 to 100, maybe 1,000 times more than that through her hymns. The more you are squeezed, the more influence you can have on others. But it's up to you what kind of influence you will have. Most of us, I'm sorry, not most of us, none of us, are going to forget the pandemic of 2020. What will you be remembered for? What kind of influence are you having on other people during this pandemic? Well, we had two other people I wanted to look at in chapter two, who are also people of influence, but I'm learning from my viewers, listeners, and other pastors that when you're online, people like shorter sermons, especially when it's approaching midnight in Europe and Africa. So we're going to stop here and look at two more people over the next couple of weeks. Would you pray with me? Lord, we ask that you'd help us to be people of godly influence, that we would draw people to Jesus Christ, and we do that in the power of the Holy Spirit within us. As we're praying... If you're still listening and you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart and you recognize your need to be saved, to have your sins forgiven, you desire eternal life in heaven in a perfect place, why not right now in your own home just cry out to Jesus and say, Jesus, save me. I believe you died for my sins on the cross and they've been forgiven. I believe you rose from the grave and you've conquered death and so are able to offer me eternal life. And I accept you right now into my life to save me. And I say thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you accepted Jesus today, man, what a happy day. We would love to connect with you deeper. Would you go to our website, kailuacommunitychurch.com? There's a button that says Accept to Christ. Uh, would you just click that, let us know who you are so we can connect with you and let you know the amazing things ahead for you. And if you've already accepted Christ, um, we believe that 
Jesus is truly going to save a lot of people through this time. So would you just join us in praying that many more would come to know him and join us in sharing that with your neighbors as well. Make sure to stay connected with us this week on Instagram, Facebook, uh, at Kailua Community Church. And now, church, would you receive this benediction? My brothers and sisters, as you are being poured out as a drink offering, may you rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit to influence others in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord. We love you, church. Have a great week, and we will see you again next Sunday.